So it's all about the, 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 the enemy within. Um, so we're all insiders, we've all got access to that data. Um, so it's about how we can understand those insider threats, but also mitigate those, those insider threats. So we're going to look at ransomware, a few thoughts on that. We're then going to look at the various examples of, of the insider threat. So in the Veronis world, there's four types of the insider threat which we'll look at. And then we're going to look at how we can mitigate those insider threats. Because you know, there's been a few questions thrown around about the poor levels of security. And a lot of it is because we don't look after the insider. We don't protect the insider. We don't protect our data. So we're going to look at how we can start to mitigate those threats. But if you look back roughly 2015, there was a massive spike in ransomware. Um, and Kevin Beaumont did some great analysis on one of the first variants, Lockheed. And this is what he saw, roughly 4,000 infections per hour. Now, back in 2015, it was a massive spike, and it's not really dropped, okay? So we're still seeing these same levels of infections nearly two years later. Now, the reason this is still an issue is because we haven't protected the inside. We spent decades protecting the perimeter, we spent decades on IDS, firewalls, etc. but we've not looked after the core which is our data. So, and this is why Matt ransomware and malware is so, is so prevalent. Because we did a, we've done two studies with the Polynom Institute. Now, as you can see, two thirds of us have access to data that we shouldn't. You just think about your own organizations and that sensitive data that we have, whether it's PII, whether it's PCI, whether it's corporate secrets, mergers and acquisitions, that's stored on our internal file service, SharePoint, SAN devices. But we're never, we're never locking down that access. Only one in three of us implement least privilege. And there's the real issue. That's the issue that we're all facing. This is why there's so many breaches. If someone breaches your network but can't access the data, you know, we're helping ourselves there. You know, if you look at one in three organizations have no way of knowing who's touching that data. So if we do get infected by ransomware, how do we know what files we need to restore? Okay. Because typically we just restore the lot, depending on how we, how, we, how we do our backups, how we do our restores. We don't even monitor what people are doing in relation to files, emails. We don't know if someone's touching the CEO's mailbox. We don't know if they're reading emails from the CEO and then marking them as unread. Because we don't monitor this activity. So it's hard for us to understand what's happening with environments when we do none of this. We don't monitor anything internally. And it's these sorts of things that can help mitigate A, the insider threat, but B, the impact of ransomware. Because ransomware hasn't really changed. You know, it's still encrypting files. The one thing that did change <coughs> is Bitcoin. The delivery mechanism didn't change. You know, phishing attacks, they've worked as well as they ever had. Um, vulnerabilities within websites, they're still the same, but Bitcoin came. Bitcoin made those 4,000 infections per hour or 100,000 per day monetizable. Because if you only get a small percentage of those infections to pay, you're making some real money. Okay? Now, if you think about what I've just talked about, if we lock down the permissions that people have, if we understand where our sensitive data is, if we enforce least privilege, any user, i.e. Malware Molly, who's one of the four insiders, gets infected, the ran ransomware propagation's got nowhere to go. It's locked down potentially to the laptop. It can't propagate across your network because we put proper access controls in place. So Malware Molly's the first of those four insiders that we at Baronis are concerned with. And this is why um, ransomware is so successful. Because you can purchase ransomware on the dark net fairly cheaply, you can configure it. You don't need a lot of skill. And the perimeter, as I said earlier, is, is to a degree irrelevant. Because if we're clicking on, on misconfigured websites, phishing emails, it's in. It's then using your credentials and your open access to propagate. And because we've got this open access, it can access all that data. Okay? The other beauty of it is, from a plus perspective, is it lets you know it there. It lets you know the files are encrypted because when you try and access them, you can't. It's encrypted. So we, it's the only insider, the only insider threat that lets you know it's there. 
And this is, should be used as you know, uh, something to enable all organizations to look at the other three insider threats that we're going to focus on now. Okay? So the other ones are disgruntled Dan. We've all got these. He's been in a company for a long period of time. He's got poor performance. He doesn't feel happy. Job satisfaction. Maybe someone's got promoted ahead of him or a bigger pay rise. But what he's able to do is he's one of those who causes damage. He's one of those who takes files when he leaves. Maybe misconfigures firewalls, routers, causes trouble for everyone else. And the perfect example of this is Greg Chung. Anyone know Greg? Not personally, but anyone heard about Greg? Um, Greg worked for Boeing for over 30 years. Now, in that 30 years, or for 30 years, he stole 30 years worth of Boeing confidential information. Estimated to be worth $2 billion that he's selling back to China. Fortunately, he was found by the FBI. The interesting thing here is, the early exfiltrated data, they found 250,000 documents under his home. And this is Boeing. Okay? This is what a disgruntled employee can do if you're just not happy. Luckily, they found him 16 years in prison. So this is a disgruntled employee. And this is why it's important to understand your sensitive data, to understand your access controls, and to lock it down. The next one, we've all got these. Abusive admin Andy. Not every abusive admin is called Andy. Um, and what they're able to do is because they've got privileged escalations or privilege, priv access privileges, they can map out networks. We can, they can laterally move across the organization to understand where your sensitive data is, to understand who's who, who's got those permissions. But the other thing that, that we can do to mitigate this is we can baseline everybody's behavior, not just admins, but anybody's, whether they're executives, normal users, admins, service accounts, baseline their behavior and understand what they do. And once we understand what any user does, we can then start to alert and detect on suspicious behavior. Because there's a, there's a common number bandied about that roughly every single inside a breach, or every breach, takes roughly 250 days for it to be notified. You can steal a lot of data in 250 days, okay? which is why understanding and baselining users' behavior is massively important. And again, you know, if we just think about this from the real world, Citibank IT, this is actually quite a good one. It's not, I like telling the story. Citibank IT guy, he found out he was getting fired, so misconfigured 90% of Citibank's routers and brought down the organization. Great quote, they was firing me, I just beat them to it, nothing personal. The upper management need to see what they guys on the floor is capable of doing when they keep getting mistreated. I took one for the team. This is what an abusive admin is able to do, bring down an organization such as Citibank, because there's no internal controls. There's no understanding of the capabilities that these people do and whether or not they're using those powers for forces of good or evil. Um, so this is what abusive admins can do. And then we get to the third, or is this the fourth? The fourth one, hijacked Hillary. And hijacked Hillary, again, it's all about understanding access rights? Can she install software? Is she using weak credentials? You know, what is the pathway of policy? Do we enforce it? Do we make people change? You know, we've all been here, you know, all day listening to people speak. But if you think about your own organizations and you move around the organization, do you ever have your, your permissions revoked? Do you ever lose access? No one ever loses access. We just collect it as the years go by which is why we've got access to all this data that we shouldn't have, because we don't enforce least privilege. Is she bribable? Can she be coerced? Not her in particular, but can anyone be coerced? Can anyone be bribed? We've all heard of Sony Pictures, and this is what greeted Sony, um, 2014. Guardians of Peace, stole six movies, not sure what the movies were. Um, but they'd used a, a hijacked account and they'd allegedly been within the Sony internal network for a year, undetected. Which ties into the 250 days before an insider breach is, 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 is realized. Okay. Turns out that it was allegedly from the 
North Korea, this hack. But it just goes to show any one of those four insiders can access data that they shouldn't do. Fortunately, obviously I'm going to be paid to say this, there is things you can do. Um, this is the breach uh, <coughs> notification. So we've had 21% of all breaches takes years to discover. 49 are discovered in months, 21% weeks, 5% in days, none in, none in hours, and minutes and seconds are that low they don't even register. So this is the issue we all face in relation to the insider threat. You know, 70% of all breaches take months and years. Just think about that, the amount of data you can exfiltrate in months and years. That's, that's the issue. This is why we need to think of our security from inside out. Every single breach is after one thing, your data. Doesn't matter how they get to it, they're after your data. So if you protect your data first and then work your security out, you're in a much better position. Which is why we've got this technology agnostic um, three-step process. Detect, prevent, sustain. Understand your data understand where it resides, understand the type of data, understand your users and baseline their activity. Because once we've baseline the activity, we can then know what's normal and what's not. And then we can start to prevent any potential breach by remediating your data, locking down the permissions, understanding where your stale data is, and then moving it away. Because by reducing your stale data, reducing your stale sensitive data, the actual amount of information that that people can get to is again reduced. And then ultimately, the third step is to sustain it. Once you've cleaned everything up and simplified your permissions, <coughs> perform entanglement reviews. Don't rely on IT to say, oh, person X requires this access. It's not IT's job. It's the data owner's job to understand who should and, should have, should and shouldn't have access. And this is where entanglement reviews, uh, automated um, disposition of data, automated authorizations and migrations of data. These are the three steps that can help you have a more secure environment. <coughs> so more detail about detect. So understand your infrastructure, understand whether it's SharePoint, your SAN, Windows, understand your AD, your NIS, your LDAP, the permissions that people have, the groups they're members of, and then discover your data primarily your sensitive data, whether it's PII, PCI, GDPR type data. Understand where that resides. Understand the staleness of that data. Discover your, your administrative accounts, your service accounts, your user accounts, and your executive accounts. And once we've done all that, understand what people are doing with all of this access so that we can baseline people's activity, baseline normality, so that when anomalous behavior occurs, we can then alert. So for example, if we get hit by ransomware, that anomalous behavior will be, will be triggered so that we can then prevent the propagation of ransomware by killing a SIFS connection, locking the user out so it doesn't propagate any further. And because we've got the audit trail, we'll know instantly what files have been affected. So we can restore individual files and reduce the cost of any, of any breach. And the same occurs whether it's privilege escalations. Someone using a service account to access sensitive data typically shouldn't. We can alert on this sort of information. Because we can alert and take that 252-day breach notification right down to the minutes, then that breach notification that we have to do, whether it's to the ICO or because of GDPR, will st you will be in a better stead because you'll be able to have notified the relevant authorities in a much better time period. Okay. And then fi finally, prioritise that sense of data where it's overexposed, which leads us on to the prevent stage. Because once we've done all that, we need to prevent the breach from happening. It's no good finding out where everything is if we're not going to stop it. So the first thing is lock it down. Lock that data down. Make sure you know only the right people have access to the right data. Little Jimmy on reception should not be having access to the bonus files for 2013, or 17 even. Um, you know, fix AD. Make sure those groups and the users within the groups are correct. If someone's left on maternity leave, why have they still got access? Okay, if they're on long-term sick, sabbatical, make sure their access is revoked. 
You know, eliminate the everyone group, authenticated users. These are default things that we all forget about. And these are some of the reasons why there's so many breaches, you know, whether it's TalkTalk Talk or Sony or, or whomever, and simplify our permissions. You know, the more complexity we add, the bigger the risk. Sim if we simplify them, there's less chance of any risk. And then one of the key things is that is data ownership. Because if we see who's touching all the data, once we know this, it's easy for us to say, okay, these people are, are the biggest users of this data, the likelihood is they will be or will know of the data owner. And once we know the data owner, it makes it easier to then grant and revoke permissions because they understand who should and shouldn't have access. Luckily, within Veronis, we can automate this because we see every touch of data, we'll make recommendations on who should and shouldn't have, should and shouldn't have access, and then we can enforce entitlement reviews. So that once we've, once we've cleaned the system up, the permissions, AD, et cetera, we can enforce entitlement reviews so that the data owner ensures a clean system, the right people have access and access to the right data at all times. And then we sustain it. We continuously monitor it, we continuously see all those events, all those touches, and then if anyone deviates from that normal baseline behavior, a policy will be triggered. Or if someone puts sensitive data in their home drive that shouldn't be there, we can automatically move it. If data that's sensitive is stale, we can automatically move it to a more secure environment so it's not overexposed. And then we can automate the movement and deletion of, of data. And then finally, we can use workflows to grant and revoke access. When, you, when you're in your organization and someone leaves, the likelihood is they don't automatically lose their, their access. It's probably there for a couple of weeks as the lever process goes through. You know, they could have access for two or three weeks. So these are the three stages that we go through. Detect, prevent, and sustain. So ransomware, it is an epidemic. It isn't going away. It's here for a while. However, the good news is that it lets us know it's there. The ransomware success should have enabled us to know how soft our insides are, to know how weak we are around the security of our data. But ransomware isn't the worst inside a threat. Unfortunately, we are, as humans, we're the biggest insider threat. Whether we're disgruntled and looking to leave, and we think, you know what, I'm leaving in 20 days, I'm taking that data, it'll be a good start in my new, in my new job. Whether it's a hijacked account, as was Sony, the insider is, is the big threat here. And ultimately, no matter what's happening, whether it's a hack, inside, outside, that's all everyone's after. You're filing your emails. If you protect the data, if you protect your sensitive data, if you understand the access, lock it down, you know, there's less chance of the breach being a major breach. Which is why detect, prevent, sustain. Thank you.